I'm Ann Mahaffey and I'm an applications engineer working on web tools here at Analog Devices. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the equations that we can use to design this RC filter that goes on this front end circuit for a SAR ADC. Um, in previous videos, we've gone through understanding how this model, how we built it, how it works, um, how the uh, charge or, or the lack of charge at this node is going to cause a kickback at the input. Um, we've come up with the equations for what this voltage drop is, which I'm calling V kick here. And um, we've talked about the time constant of this overall RC filter um, that will um, help us to understand how this decays over time. And then one more thing to add to this so that we kind of have a full picture of this curve is the voltage that we need it to settle to at the end, you know, before this acquisition time ends. Um, so a good rule of thumb that we use is we want it to settle within a half an LSB of, of the uh, resolution of this ADC. And so just a, a, a simple equation for that is, is the reference voltage of the ADC and then um, using the resolution of the ADC plus one um, in this equation here. So we've got, we've got a number for this, we've got a number for this. We know that this needs to settle within the acquisition time. Um, this is specified in the data sheet. And actually what you'll often find specified in the data sheet um, is it's the conversion time is what's fixed. And so the acquisition time is the overall sample rate minus the conversion time. And the reason this is important is that as you, let's say you took an ADC, but you didn't sample it at the max sample rate, maybe you slowed the sample rate down, that's actually giving you a longer acquisition time as you settle the, or slow the sample rate down. So, um, so knowing the acquisition time is important. And so these are all, this is kind of the basis for our curve and how we, uh, can determine if this if we select an R and a C for the circuit if it's going to settle. Um, so to to kind of wrap all these equations together and to quantify it, um, if we know what the time constant is, and if you remember and you can go and 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 look this up, uh, the time constant essentially tells us um, how long it takes for this um, RC decay to settle and I believe it's 63% of the full scale. Um, so that's what that T is in seconds. Um, and so you can, you can, again, I recommend you go look this up if this is rusty for you. Um, but what we know about this RC decay is the number of time constants we need um, to fully settle this is gonna be the natural log of of this you know full voltage here over what it is we want to settle it to and like i said i'm not going to go into how this is derived i would just recommend looking up rc filter um, uh, equations or you know just under understanding time constants so so that's an equation that, that is going to help us. And then uh, to, to kind of pull it all together, what we need to know is that our acquisition time, so we've got this acquisition time here. We need to know that it's at least gonna be enough time to settle our time constant times the number of time constants required based on that equation. Um, so if we, we, we've got ta here, so we need this acquisition time to at least be as large as this time constant times the number of time constants. And so you can see this, this math gets a little tedious. Um, so this is something we can find from the data sheet. 
we've got the time constant we've got to plug into here we've got an equation for the kickback and we've got an equation for the settling time and so this is something that you'd, you'd probably have to be somewhat iterative with um, select an r and a c and crank it through this math and decide okay did everything work out so that um, it's going to settle within my time constant if it didn't uh, you know lower the bandwidth and try again so something to keep in mind uh, that the balancing act that you've got when you're selecting this RC is that you want the time constant to be, um, you wanna select something to where it's gonna settle within the acquisition time, but you don't wanna settle, um, you also want to make it so the bandwidth is as high as it can be. So it's sort of an inverse relationship. Um, so if you remember the bandwidth, is uh, inversely proportional to the time constant. So you want to make your bandwidth as large, as, or I mean as small as possible to limit how much noise is coming through into your ADC, but then you don't want to make the bandwidth so small that it ends up that you've got, you've picked an RNSC that's that's not gonna allow it to settle in time. So you're kind of trying to find this, this uh, you know, sort of a magic number, this balancing between these two considerations. Um, so, you know, there's there's a couple different ways. The way that I've given you these equations, they'd be pretty easy to, um, you know, just plug into a calculator or use Excel. I will say there's a couple things to think about um, as you're using these equations is, um, one, there's zero consideration for this driver. So at this point, we've made an assumption that the driver is ideal. Um, and that it's not impacting this at all, and that is actually not true. Um, so I would say this gives us a really good starting point for understanding the kickback, um, but I would strongly encourage that once you understand it and, and you, you know, sort of get a feel um, to really evaluate your circuit design, um, I would highly recommend using a tool that's going to uh, consider the impact of the driver. So that would be something like uh, LT Spice or our precision ADC driver tool. Both of those will give you a better understanding of how this driver is going to impact the circuit. Um, I will get into the impact of the driver in uh, future videos, but for now, um, the, the videos up till now, I think have given us a good framework for understanding uh, the impact of this kickback and, and some of the design considerations, especially with the RC filter.